Oh, 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 okay. This plane stands very weirdly tall. Now, the Japanese are very good at making stuff, whether it's cars, watches, trains, very reliable cell phones, but something that they've never done quite right is airplanes. Well, I mean, they kind of tried a little bit with the Mitsubishi space jet, but it never became reality. Instead, all the airliners that we fly today are either made in North America or France or Brazil. But, well, what if I told you that Japan actually tried to make one airliner, and it's this one, the NAMC YS-11. Yes, Japan's pretty much only airliner, and it had its first flight in the 1960s, but even though it was a very good airplane, it kind of failed. They lost a lot of money on this. Only 182 of these were built, and today we're going to find out why. We can do that now because we finally have this mysterious airliner for a flight sim, for the Microsoft flight sim. You can buy this thing now for 15 euros and fly this plane, the Japanese equivalent basically of the Fokker F-50, for example. Now, for some reason, whenever I spawn into this plane, we tip onto the tail. Probably, I don't know, maybe it's tail heavy. Maybe some Americans are sitting here in the back of the airplane. But yes, this plane sure looks nice. As you can see, we've got quite a few windows. 64 people can sit inside of the YS-11. I'd have to say those Rolls-Royce tour prop engines look very interestingly placed on the wing. It looks a little bit goofy. Let's go into the cockpit. And this is always my favorite bit when I talk about an aircraft manufacturer that I haven't seen before. Because all aircraft manufacturers have their own cockpit design blueprints. I mean, all Airbuses kind of look the same. So do Boeings. And let me say, this cockpit looks very nicely done for the 1960s. I mean, compare that to, okay, maybe the Concorde is an extreme example because it's a plane that is a lot more complicated. But what a clean over it panel and this is kind of the thing about this plane it was very well designed very ruggedly designed and that's the reason why this plane even though it was built for like 12 years until 1974 still flew around for a long time japan air commuter retired this plane only in 2006 and the military version of this plane flew for japan all the way up until 2021 so let's go ahead and turn on this uh, simple plane this is kind of this is like flying a pc-12 so starting ignition turn that on i guess and uh, engine number yeah, two. Let's press the starter button. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. That is a very cool. Oh, it's turned off again. I think I need to hold it. No problem. Maybe put in some fuel in here. Yeah, that's the way to roll, ladies and gentlemen. The anime airliner is turning on and it's still tipping over for some reason. I don't know why that is. Anyway. Ah, all right, there we go. We've managed to untip ourselves. Good, damn, these are some really, really big propellers that are quite close to the fuselage. Very interestingly built. Now, let's turn on engine number one as well. Looking good. We can turn on the generators right here. Good, and the engines are turning on. Perfect. Our plane is happy. Let's go ahead and turn on, yep, the lights here. I'm glad this is all in English, by the way. That's better. And just like that, we are ready to roll already. This was quick. Let's go ahead and use this EFB right here to uh, close all the doors and especially get rid of the chocks. Oh, chocks? Okay, it doesn't seem like I can get rid of them. Oh, we can. Oh, there we go. That's done. That's done that. Now, the good thing about this plane is that it really didn't need a long runway at all. So I guess that's something we might check today. Oh, little flight control check. Yeah, everything works and this airplane bounces around very happily. Now we are at some Japanese airport on an island somewhere and look at the flaps coming out. Flaps go down all the way up until 35 degrees, but there's lots of settings right here. Let's go and use the lower setting and let's go ahead and turn this airplane around now and go full power. Let's do it. Take off now. These engines are doing well. Look at that. This is the airspeed indicators and knots good and we're starting to pick up on speed really really quickly and we are taking off come on come on uh oh okay slide over run nothing to worry about uh good now let's go ahead and put this landing gear up very good and we can now climb of course, this airplane is pressurized. We can't forget that this plane flew for the first time over 60 years ago, right? Now, while we're flying, let's go ahead and check out the cabin. Looks like your typical 1960s upholstery right there. And with the size of these huge engines that are hanging over the wings, you can't really see much when you're like in the middle of the plane, I do have to say. But check out this add-on. I think it's quite well done. Here we have um, sort of an aft galley and it. it looks quite nicely done. I mean, what in the world would be here, by the way? That's like wasted space. Either way, we even have a toilet in the back, of course. Looks very nice. And it's Japanese, so it's probably always clean. Aha, this is where it's, we can see that this is actually a Japanese airliner. Um, I just don't quite know what stew call means in this case. Are you being called to eat stew? What kind of stew is it? 
Do we have options between vegetarian? And something that works is even a toilet fl flush. So highly realistic. Either way, this plane flew quite nicely. So you may wonder then, well, if it was quite nice of a plane technically, why was it such a commercial failure. Once again, only 180 of these were built, and in order for the development and production costs to break even, they would have had to build 400 of these airplanes. Now, in Japan, quite a lot of these were flying around. For Air Nippon, which we all know, and of course, JAL as well, a few of these planes were sold internationally though as well, even to the US, to Europe, with Greece, a few international operators, but the truth is this plane failed to compete with other airliners of its class, like the F-27. Almost 600 of these were built, or even the much older Convair airplanes. Over a thousand of these were built. Well, I guess the main issue was for this airliner that no one knew the company. There was no track record. What about spare parts? Actually operating a plane becomes a bit easier when it's built in your continent, right? Oftentimes, the YS-11 was sold even with a discount to get operators interested in this plane at all. Because the other turboprop airliners already had a global network. They were already well established. And I guess the YS-11 didn't offer enough of a unique selling point. And what I've read so far is that actually the customer support when you ended up buying a plane wasn't necessarily satisfying enough when it comes to spare parts indeed. So why buy this when you can buy the established brand? Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can take off here from St. Barth. Probably not. Alrighty, full power. Come on, come on. Let's put out the flaps now yeah 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 come on slightest of overruns no trouble whoa okay this is pretty stupid but it is now about time that we land the ys11 and i want to really try that at saint barth's so let's do it okay looking good what i think is really interesting is this radio altimeter shows you how high you are on this like scale thing very interesting okay let's not stall out you can do it let's do a nice landing it's a bit windy out here Oh, 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 okay. This plane stands very weirdly tall. Let's go ahead and reverse thrust. Looking good. Stopping isn't much of an issue in this one. Very good. And the landing gear seems quite rugged enough to be able to withstand a landing like this, so no trouble. So everybody, Japan's forgotten airliner. Only airliner. And I mean that literally because there's a good chance you haven't ever heard of this plane. It seems quite nice to fly. It's a big shame. It kind of failed. So everybody, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I'll see you guys tomorrow as always. Good night. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters. <laughs> Guns Killer, R27, James Duram, That Dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishijitsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New The York. You've got beautiful names.